All right, guys. In this episode, I'm going to talk about three very important notions, proto-optimality or weak proto-optimality, they're related, and the individual rationality. Well, why do we talk about these? Because they are very, very important notions to judge whether a solution to a bargaining problem is a good solution or not a good solution, okay? So these are basically the criteria uh, of goodness, um, okay? Well, and these are in fact a common, uh, I mean, commonly used notions in economic theory. And so we just apply them into the uh, bargaining problem. All right, the first one, the proto-optimality, all right? So we call this a proto set of the bargaining problem SD, all right? Remember SD is a bargaining problem and its proto set is denoted by PSD. How do we define it? Well, this set includes all the feasible payoff vectors in S such that, well, if there exists, remember this is if then statement, all right? So it may be confusing. Uh, if you understand it, actually it's very simple. And it's in fact what uh, proto-optimality is in economics. So it's not something very different. If there exists another payoff vector, x prime. So where is this x prime coming from? As you see, there's no restriction, but obviously it should be coming from Rn, right? Uh, obviously it doesn't have to be in S, but it, it's, I mean, we're talking about, remember S is a subset of Rn, so therefore X prime, I mean, cannot be coming from totally different space because I can't really compare X prime with X if they're from a different space. So it should be coming from Rn. So if there exists an X prime, which is greater than or equal to X, well then, that means x prime shouldn't be in s, all right? Okay, so intuitively, what does that mean? That means an x, a payoff vector, a feasible payoff vector is proto efficient or proto optimal. That means there is no another, all right? No other payoff, feasible payoff vector. I'm sorry, yeah, there's no other feasible payoff vector where. Uh, at least one agent gets strictly better off and no agent gets worse off. Remember, this is the standard definition of predominability. And in fact, mathematically, this is how we can define it in short. Okay, well, let me talk about weak predominability because they're very re uh, related. Uh, and then I'll talk about these three examples. Weak proto-optimality or weak proto-set of the bargaining problem SD, we denote it by WPSD, is defined very similarly, X in S, uh, such that uh, X prime is, if X prime is strictly higher than X, remember these are vectors, right? So if X prime is strictly better than or higher than X, well, that means X prime is not in S. So here, the only difference, as you see, is here we have weak inequality, here we have strict equality. So once again, the notion is the same. Uh, X is a weak proto-optimal if there exists no other feasible uh, uh, sort of uh, 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 payoff vector, which gives all agents a better payoff, all right? So Again, before talking about individual rationality, which is a very simple uh, notion, let's talk about these examples. So the first example is the one we uh, talked about in the previous episode. Uh, so this is set S, right? This entire triangle. And so in this triangle, what is the proto set of uh, this problem? Well, it's basically this boundary, all right? Uh, which is like X1 plus X2 is equal to 100. So this entire uh, boundary hypotenuse is the uh, proto set. So this is PSD and also WPSD. Well, why is that so? Well, pick any X on this, uh, you know, X1 plus X2 equals 100, all right? So what does it mean X prime is greater than or equal to, or strictly. Well, let's, let's talk about strictly first. So strictly higher than X. It means X prime has a higher X1, right? This is X1 
and this is x2. So it has strictly higher x1 and strictly higher x2. So therefore, I have to put dots here maybe because the boundaries are not included because I want strictly higher x1 and x2. So dot, 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 dot. So therefore, x primes must be in this region. Again, if you are looking a payoff vector which is strictly better than this x, which has x1 and x2 components, well, those x primes must lie outside of this set S. All right, so if I have x prime greater than x, it is in fact outside of uh, this set S. So therefore, any x, there's nothing special about this point. Take another point on this hypotenuse of this triangle, you'll see the same thing. So that any point on this hypotenuse is in fact, uh, you know, satisfying weak proto-optimality. And well, here, the strong proto-optimality or proto-optimality basically says those boundaries are also included. I mean, X prime can be somewhere here or here or anywhere here. But again, they all have to be outside of this triangle S. Okay, so therefore, this hypotenuse is the uh, Predo set or the weak Predo set. What about this? Uh, this is another example where um, obviously the players are not risk neutral, okay? Um, well, here, what is the set of uh, Predo optimal uh, or the weak Predo optimal allocations? It's all these, oops, I'm sorry, all these points, okay? Well, again, how do I know that? Well, pick any point. Uh, so this is x. If you're looking for x prime greater than or equal to x, well, you know what? You have to increase the, the second dimension. You have to increase the first dimension. So those x primes should be, you know, in this part or in, in, this, in this region. So therefore, all of them, all those x primes, whether it's greater than or equal or strictly greater, has to be outside, lying outside of this set S. So therefore, this is the set S, remember. So any point on this x, or on this um, sort of curve, are actually weak Predo or the Predo of this uh, bargaining problem. What about this one? So here, this is special. It's a flat line here. And then sort of, uh, I don't know, uh, it's, 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 it's the declining curve and then sort of a straight uh, line here. So here, if we are looking for weak Predo set, it's all these points, okay? So this entire, again, uh, front line, um, I'm gonna call it front line, right? Everywhere, the, those front lines are actually Predo, uh, potential Predos. And here it's as well, so all those you know, points on this, uh, on this uh, curve is a weak Predo. However, for example, this X is not uh, Predo, okay? So this is not in PSD. How do I know that? Well, remember, if there is X prime greater than or equal to X, it shouldn't be in set S. However, if this is my X, I can pick my X prime here. What is X prime? Remember, X prime is giving agent one more payoff, more utility, and agent two, same utility. All right, so X prime is greater than or equal to X, and X prime is in set S. So you know what? There's nothing special about this point X. Any point here, and similarly, any point here, are not going to satisfy this property. So therefore, they are not in uh, the PSD set. So this is PSD, all right? Only this portion of the front uh, line is PSD, but this entire, uh, I'm gonna denote it, you know, these three lines, uh, this is WPSD. One final point, well, what about things like this? Why this is not, I didn't even consider them. Well, I think that's obvious because they can obviously can't be in this or this set. Why? Well, because look, having something more than X means 
you can pick this point, right, sort of on the 45 degree line. Uh, I mean, of, of, sort of of, sort of 45 degree uh, line I'm drawing from this point. So just pick another point here, which is in S. However, this gives both agent one and agent two higher uh, payoffs. So therefore, I actually have this. So I have another X prime, which is greater than or equal to or strictly higher than X. And it is in fact in set S. So therefore, X cannot be predoptimal or weak predoptimal. All right. So uh, for that reason, I didn't really even look at the points uh, inside the set S. Because again, according to those definitions, for any bargaining problem, points inside the uh, front line will never be uh, pretty optimal, weak or strong. All right? The pretty optimal points are always on the boundaries. All right. Um, well, same here. I mean, these boundaries are not going to give you give you pretty optimality because there's always improvement. Okay. Good. I hope that was clear. Well, next, before I finish uh, my uh, video, let's talk about individual rationality. Well, the idea is very simple. The individual rational set of the bargaining problem SD basically set off all feasible payoff vectors where every individual gets at least as high as his or her uh, disagreement value. All right, so x is greater than or equal to d. So I, I bit sort of uh, messed up the pictures. I'm sorry about this. So I may clean a little. So remember, in my first example, this triangle is the set of uh, feasible payoffs. And the disagreement point is the 0, 0 point. So everything higher than this, basically everything uh, on the northeast of this point, meaning this entire triangle, is going to give me the individually rational set of payoffs, which is S itself. What about here? Well, here, I purposefully put the D, all right, I mean, uh, I don't know this bargain, the, the specifics of this bargaining problem, but let's suppose for some reason, the disagreement point gives 20 units to each player. Right, for some reason. Well, then the set of individually rational, including those boundaries, points are going to be this. This is ISD. Because everything outside of this uh, sort of uh, uh, pi region is going to be giving either player uh, negotiator 2 or negotiator 1 less than 20 units. For example, any point here give both agents less than 20 units of payoff. Here, clearly agent 1 is getting more than 20, but agent 1 gets less than 20. All right? um, and here, uh, to be honest, I don't know where I put the... Uh, uh, the disagreement point, but let's say the disagreement point is here. So this is D. So all I just do is they, you know, draw a straight line, uh, sort of a, 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 <clears throat> parallel to the Y axis and then parallel to the X axis. And then everything to the Northeast of this is going to give me I S D. Okay. Well, one final thing, the individual rationality is important. Because it basically says, remember the idea of disagreement point is like if negotiation fails, each agent is going to get his or her disagreement payoff. It's the status quo. And the second assumption was uh, the decisions must be made unanimously. I mean, nobody can enforce any uh, sort of solution. It's like any price. So for that reason, if this is any bargaining problem, all right, if this is a bargaining problem, the solution of this bargaining problem cannot be this. Why? Well, because clearly negotiator two is going to reject this solution because it gives him less than his disagreement point. He could, in fact, I mean, imagine it's like here, uh, the zero zero, remember, the guy doesn't want to sell his house. It's if the, 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 the seller, if the price is less than $500. And so therefore, any point outside of this triangle is basically like some negative number to the buyer or to the seller or maybe both. It means the price is way too low than $500. And so the seller is going to reject it and not sell it. So this is always your option to take. 
the, the disagreement point. So therefore, if we're, to, if, if we're gonna talk about a good, reasonable solution of a bargaining problem, well, it has to satisfy individual rationality or maybe the weak or the strong predoptimality because predoptimality, as it is always the case, uh, basically implies that these guys are not going to waste any resources, all right? And so they're going to basically uh, chew something on the front line or on the boundary. Okay, I hope all these were clear.